Okay, class, we're going to chapter four, moving right along. I think you guys are getting the hang of it. Uh, so now we're going to do some prefixes in chapter four. Uh, chapter goals, same thing. Uh, let's see, define basic prefixes used in medical language. So carpo is wrist. Uh, you've heard of carpal tunnel. All right, so what about cis? Cis means to cut. And the whole point of all medical terminology is so you can read a medical chart with ease, right? There we're, we're going to use terminology that you're probably not familiar with, but um, it'll be good to uh, have a good background on this. Cost, uh, it means rib, costal, car, costal, chondritis, cutaneous, skin, dactyl, meaning fingers, duct, meaning lead, lead or carry. Uh, uh, flex is bend, so flexion. Uh, gloss is tongue, glossopharyngeal. Um, combining forms, glyc, sugar, immuno, protection, morph, shape, mort, death, like a mortuary, place of death. Uh, nate, nat, birth, norm, rule or order, ox, oxygen, pub, pubis, seps, infection, so sepsis, you've heard of that. Somno, sleep, sun is sound. The, that, the, thili is nipple. Tense is force. Uh, um, thyro is thyroid gland. Top, place, position, location. Tox, poison, toxicology. Uh, study of poison. Trach, windpipe, urethra, urethra. Right? So getting used to all these combining forms. Now, crin means to secrete, so you have endocrine and exocrine. Drome is run. Fusion is coming together. Gia, substance that produces. So before we had the combining forms, now we're going to suffixes. We always start with the suffixes. So this is where you pay attention. Lysis is breakdown. Meter is measure. Mission is send. Or is one who. Oxia is oxygen. So hypoxia would be lack of oxygen. Partum is birth or labor. So postpartum, postpartum depression is depression after labor. Phoria, uh, bear, fear, feeling, right? Or euphoria, a feeling of well-being. Grow is physis. Plasia is development, formation or growth. Plasm, structure or formation. Breathing is apnea, so apnea would be difficulty breathing. Happening, tum, like a symptom. Ptosis, falling, drooping, prolapse. Rhea, flow, discharge. Stasis, stopping, controlling, trophy, development. So you can see some of these carry over from chapter three, and it's always good for repetition. So this is the prefixes. So now a or an means no, not, or without. ab is away from. So abnormal would be away from normal. ad is toward. A deduction. Anna is up or apart. Anti is before or forward. Anti is against. Auto is self. Bias to. Brady is slow. So um, bradykinesia, slow movement. Kata, down. Catabolism is breaking down. Con is with. Contra is against. D is down, lack of. Dia is through or complete. Dis is abnormal. Okay. Ek is out or without. Endo is in or within. So some examples of contra would be contralateral. Um, down or lack of dehydration. Right. Dia, flow, we uh, give you that example of diarrhea. Uh, dis would be dyspnea, difficulty breathing. Uh, ectopic, out, outside. So you know what an ectopic pregnancy is, pregnancy out of the normal place. And endo, uh, endoscope would be instrument to view within the body. So epi would be a 
upon, on, or above. So epithelium, right, skin or surface. U means good or normal. So euphoria, remember, or eupnea is good, normal breathing. Euphoria is a good feeling or a high. X means outside. So let's say it's what if you had a word that's exophthalmia? Exophthalmia. You know that ophthalmia is re related to eyeballs, so X would be outside. So yes, that would be a protrusion of the eyeball. Hemi is half. Um, hemiparesis, you know that from strokes. Hyper is excessive, so hyperplasia, hypertrophy, hyperglycemia. And hypo would be deficient, so hypoglycemia, hypodermic. So hypodermic, like a hypodermic needle, would be what pertaining to below the skin. So now you're getting it. Uh, in is not. So insomniac is uh, pertaining to inability to sleep. Incision is a process of cutting into. Infra is beneath. So infracostal would be below the ribs. Inter is between and intra is in or within. So intercostal would be between the rim, the ribs and intravenous would be pertaining to within a vein. Right, so intratester versus intertester. Intra would be, I would be doing the test myself a couple times where inter would be uh, 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 two separate people doing the test. All right. So it would be like a nurse taking the blood pressure. Intertester reliability would be two separate nurses. And intratester reliability would be the same nurse doing the blood pressure several times. Macro is large. So macrocephalic would be pertaining to an enlarged head. Mal is bad. We don't like that. So malignant, harmful, bad, cancerous. Uh, malace, malace, feeling of discomfort. Uh, meta, metamorphosis, your condition of change or form. Micro small, so a microscope, right? Instrument to view small objects. Neo is a, a new growth, neoplasm. Pan, um, so pancytopenia would be a condition of decrease in all cells, usually blood cells. Para is abnormal, you know, paranormal. Paralysis, abnormal destruction of nerves. Per is through, so percutaneous, pertaining to through the skin. Peri is surrounding, so a pericardium would be like a membrane surrounding the heart. Poly, or let's say it's polyneuritis, is inflammation of many nerves. Post, uh, postnatal, pertaining to afterbirth. Pre is prenatal, pertaining to before an earth. And pro is before or forward, so prodrome or prolapse, prolapse sliding forward or downward. Pros is before or forward. Re is back again, so like a relapse, somebody goes back into a relapse of their cancer. Retro would be behind, so retroperitoneal would be behind the peritoneum. Sub is underneath, so subcutaneous under the skin. Supra is above. So like a suprathoracic pertaining to above the, the chest. Sin or sim is together with. So synthesis or syndrome, a group of symptoms that run together. We'll talk about Down syndrome a little bit. But synthesis would be to put place together as in protein synthesis or photosynthesis. And then we go tachy, fast, tachycardia, uh, trans like transurethral pertaining to through the urethra. We'll talk about that. I'll show you a diagram of that. Ultra is beyond like ultra sonography, process of recording ultrasound beyond the normal range of waves. And uni is pertaining to one side, so unilateral. Quick quiz, hot shot. Which term means a muscle that draws a limb toward the body? Watch the ceiling, adductor, 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 or abductor, and it's adductor, C is in cat. Which term means painful breathing, dyspnea, dysplasia, apnea, or cephalgia. So, dyspnea. 
So let's take a closer look at some antigens and antibodies, the RH condition, background in RH condition. An antigen is a substance usually foreign to the body that stimulates the production of antibodies. So antibodies are protein substances made by white blood cells in response to the presence of foreign antigens. We like antibodies. Anytime you get a vaccine, you'll be, probably make antibodies. But an antigen, we don't like antigens. That's a substance usually foreign to the body that stimulates the production of antibodies. So with COVID-19, you're ta talking about a lot of antigen and antibodies, right? We want antibodies for COVID-19 if you've been exposed. Now the ARCH condition is an antigen antibody condition that develops when there is a difference in ARCH blood factor between the pregnant mother Rh negative and that of the fetus, which is Rh positive. Okay, so that's like the are you B positive, A positive, OH, I'm sorry, O positive, AB positive, uh, or are you negative, O negative, A negative. So that is the Rh condition. In anatomy class, you'll learn more about that. Again, medical terminology, we're not, I'm not going to describe the condition or how it happens. That's that'd be beyond the scope of this class. Um, so the first pregnancy is Rh negative, baby's red blood cells, Rh negative is the mother. At delivery of the first pregnancy, Rh positive antigen passed from baby to mother. Y antibody made by mother in response to Rh positive antigen from baby, usually no problems for the baby. And the second pregnancy, now you have antibodies from the mother passed to the baby and destroy red blood cells of baby. This occurs early in the pregnancy if the mother has not received RH immunoglobulin. So again, I'm not going to quiz you on the, the, the physiology of RH condition. This is just a kind of a, a good introduction to really I want you to know the difference between antigen and antibodies at the end of the day. Um, antibodies are made by what type of cells? Platelets, leukocytes, thrombocytes, or erythrocytes. So if you go back. Antibodies are made by white blood cells, so white blood cells are leukocytes. What's a congenital anomaly? Congenital meaning at birth, an irregularity in structure organ that an infant is born with. Examples are web, web fingers or toes, syndactyl, heart defects, and club feet. Usually a congenital anomaly is very rare in the United States because we have good prenatal care, but in countries uh, where prenatal care they don't have access to, you'll see a large uh, portion of congenital anomalies. Some congenital anomalies are hereditary. Others are produced by factors present during pregnancy. For example, fetal alcohol syndrome. If a mother is drinking while pregnant, um, drinks high levels of alcohol, resulting in physical and mental defects. Uh, so here's some congenital anomalies, little webbed hands here, and then they forgot to separate here. So again, not the end of the world. You could probably have surgery to uh, fix these. Uh, probably have surgery to fix this, but you know, something people think it's cool. Closer look at recombinant DNA. You know what that DN deoxyribonucleic acid. Um, those are found in chromosomes. Remember, humans have 46 chromosomes: 23 from mama, 23 from papa makes the beautiful creature as you, so you look a little like, like your mom, a little like your papa. Uh, recombinant DNA is taking a gene from one organism and inserting it into the DNA of another organism. So we got some crazy technology. Recombinant techniques are used to manufacture insulin outside the body. Um, this new tr technique called the CRISPR is an acronym for a technique to change DNA sequences and turn off genes or replace them with new versions. So you know that they've mapped the entire human genome. So imagine this, if you knew that you had a gene for diabetes, what if you could go in there and turn that gene off and then your offspring would not be prone to diabetes? Now you raise some ethical questions, but you know, that's just diabetes. But what about some severe life threatening diseases? If you knew that, hey, your baby might have Tay-Sachs disease and we know that we could, we know what uh, gene that is in. If we go in and turn that off, would you be willing to do that? Or are you playing God there? Right? So, so there's some ethical questions there that we want to, uh, it's a tough question. It's a tough situation and only you can answer it when it's, uh, when you're put in that situation. 
So a syndrome is a group of signs or symptoms that commonly occur together uh, and indicate a particular disease or abnormal condition. Uh, Ray syndrome is characterized by vomiting, swelling of the brain, increased intracranial pressure, hypoglycemia, and dysfunction of the liver. Uh, may occur in children after a viral infection that has been treated with aspirin. Okay, so that's why you shouldn't give aspirin to young children. You can give them Tylenol, but not aspirin because it could happen. It's like an allergic reaction. Um, Stephen Johnson's disease is also another one where uh, kids can have an allergic reaction to that. Uh, so be careful with giving kids aspirin. Okay, now what's the difference between sign and a symptom? People think that it's uh, uh, interchangeable, but no, there is a difference between sign and symptom. So again, make sure you know the difference between a sign and a symptom. Usually a sign, or the definition, the sign is objective evidence. So sign is their blood pressure is 120 over 80. Their sign is their heart rate is you know 90 a symptom would be what something that a patient would say you know it's like i'm feeling dizzy i'm feeling lightheaded i'm feeling queasy in the stomach you really can't measure that objectively so that would be a symptom that a patient reports but a sign could see be something that you could objectively measure right so make sure you know the difference between a sign and symptom they are not the same um here's down syndrome right Trisomy 21 occurs when you have an extra chromosome, so usually the, the patients have 47 chromosomes. Remember I said for humans we have 46, so in Down syndrome you have an extra chromosome. Uh, it's called trisomy 21 because it occurs on the 21st chromosome. But some of those flat facial features, that would be a sign, small head and ears sign, because that's something that we could see, short neck we could measure, bulging tongue we can measure, eyes that slant up upward uh, atypically shaped uh, ears uh, we can measure that and poor muscle tone okay so these are all signs again symptoms would be headaches uh, uh, nausea um, not feeling well uh, so those are some things that we couldn't measure but signs we can objectively measure um, what is a transurethral resection of the prostate glands called a terp um, a portion of the prostate gland is removed with an instrument passed through the trans, the urethra. This doesn't look very pleasant at all. Uh, um, the procedure is indicated with prosthetic tissue increases hyperplasia and it interferes with urination. So, right, so you'd be a terp. So you'd go in there and work that out. Yeah, this doesn't look uh, pleasant at all. And then what's ultrasonography? Ultrasonography is a diagnostic technique using ultrasound waves to produce an image or a photograph of an organ or tissue. Now you can use an echocardiogram, that's ultrasound image of the heart, or a sonogram, which is a fetal ultrasound image. So when you get pregnant, you might have a sonogram, but people use the word ultrasound. I'm going to go get an ultrasound because I'm in my fourth trimester but you're really getting a sonogram which is a fetal ultrasound image and then an echocardiogram is an ultrasound image of the heart so using the terminology correctly will make you sound much uh, smarter and more accepted in the medical community so chapter four is done good job